it's Rick here at MaritimeGardening.com and I thought I'd just show you uh, my goldfish pond. I see, right now I see two goldfish out moving around. There's one right down there and there's another one over by that rock. Uh, if I try to get too close they might run away. Uh, so this goldfish pond and what's unique about it is that I seem to break a rule every year that people seem to think is the most important thing in the world to follow. And uh, I break that rule and the goldfish survive anyway. I'm going to explain why I think that's the case. Anyway, every year I get comments of people saying that, you know, before the water freezes, I should put a pump underneath the ice to provide oxygen to the fish. And I've never done that. And every year the fish come back, come back. Maybe one dies every year. Um, this year, none, as far as I could tell, none of them have died. Now there's about four or five visible now. Um, so this year, none of them have died. Um, I used to make the, you know, in, in the earlier years, the pond wasn't as big. But a couple of years ago, I made it bigger and deeper. And uh, I remember spring of 2021, there was one dead goldfish. This year, I haven't got any dead. And why, you know, so some people say, well, one died because there wasn't enough air, but there was enough air for the ones that rem remained. But that doesn't explain why I have none dead now. <laughs> what I think is that it, it just doesn't make any sense. This, this uh, pond is rain fed. And where I live, Nova Scotia, Canada, sure, the water freezes every year, but water comes into this all winter long. So we, you know, we have weird days in the winter where it warms up and it rains. So it's getting rainwater. Uh, rainwater is well oxygenated right it's flying through the sky and it goes into the pond just drains in there i mean the water isn't all, all some of the water comes in across the surface but some of it wells up from the ground that's another unique feature of this pond this is just a hole in the ground there is no bladder here never was uh, the year i started the pond i just dug a hole it was about half this size and the next year i dug it bigger and the next year i dug it deeper then next year I dug it deeper again. I can see my black, oh, there's a black goldfish on the other side there. I can see him moving around, him or her. I call them all hymns. <laughs> but anyway, uh, the black ones are around. Yeah, there's one black one that I got from a pond somewhere. Um, anyway, I think the reason that this pond doesn't seem to follow the rules that you typically read in manuals is because there is no bladder, right? So it's just ground underneath there so water is constant whenever it rains there's fresh water coming in which brings in its own oxygen but there's also just soil underneath so to some extent there is air exchange coming up out of the soil right not a lot but uh, and combined with that in the winter and I mean this pretty much stays frozen from sometime in uh, December until like a couple weeks ago um, but it's uh <laughs> You know, so it's frozen all of that time, but there's just rainwater getting into it. And the other thing that happens underneath the ice is that the fish just slow uh, way down, right? Their metabolism slows down. Their oxygen need is very low because the water is, you know, just a, the water that isn't frozen is just just above for, just above freezing, right? Might be four or five degrees Celsius, all right? Let me bring in a little bit closer there and see if we can have another look at these goldfish. These goldfish have never been fed. Uh, everything in this pond just fends for itself. <laughs> the only trick with this is you have to keep that when you have it this style. And I mean, my, my, this is a wild forest here, right? Is that I have to keep the water levels up. Uh, if it gets too shallow, things like raccoons get in there and just kill everything. <laughs> so there's always a risk. And it's always amazing, you know, when I built this thing, I, this was a natural spot where water just seemed to gather it's a drainage it's basically a low point so I just started digging holes there you can see the black one over there let me just bring the camera over a little closer there Hope I don't spook him too much got the camera attached to a stick you see those guys over there a couple guys right there and a guy over there I think there might be one underneath those leaves there too Right, so a few of them are out moving around today. If they get too close, they'll spook. You can see some moving around deep under the surface over there where it's deep. That's pretty much where they spend the winter as far as I can tell in that deeper spot. 
looks like all this movement has spooked them away. Yeah, so I mean these fish just are, uh, the fish I put in here are what they call feeder fish. They're the fish in the, in the pet store that they use to feed piranhas and stuff like that. But I have never fed them. I mean, every once in a while, kids will throw a worm in just to watch it, you know, die a violent death. <laughs> but other than that, um, the fish just eat, as far as I can tell, they eat mosquito larvae and, you know, different things like that. Um, once a year, my kids will catch a whole bunch of tadpoles and uh, let them go in the pond. I mean, like dozens and dozens of tadpoles. And the tadpoles never turn into frogs. <laughs> and I think I know why. <laughs> so I think these goldfish just uh, destroy them. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, anyway, I, I remember they were building a house on a piece of property near here. And there was a pond with uh, that they were going to fill in. And I told my kids, this is when they were really young, to go there every day and catch, gold, uh, catch the tadpoles to save them. And they let them all go in the pond here. And they all vanished. <laughs> I mean, the whole point was to have this great biology science sort of summer where they'd see the dad tadpoles, you know, um, uh, develop and the little legs and the tail disappear. And none of that happened. They just vanished in a couple of days. <laughs> and these goldfish, I mean, the ones I'm looking at right now, uh, you know, tip to tip in terms of length, they're about four inches long, three to four inches long. And they were about, you know, inch and a half when I stuck them in initially. Right, so I mean they're well, well fed, happy, healthy fish, um, but I don't feed them, right? Uh, anyway, just a few points on uh, goldfish ponds and the idea that they need air over the winter. I think if if, if they're frozen up, I think if the pond is a completely closed system, and that's probably the case. But if you've got no bladder in it, so there's basically some degree of exchange between the actual ground and the water in the pond, and you've got rainwater coming into it in large amounts, you know, not just what lands on the surface, but it's basically it's coming from every angle here. It's just draining in from all over the place. This is a low point on the land, like a, like a natural pond would be. It's the, you know, ponds and lakes are where the water gathers. This is just like all, Whenever there's any sort of rain or melt or anything, the water goes in here, even in the winter. I'm lucky, right, where I've got a uh, weird winter here in Nova Scotia where in Jan you know, it can get very cold, minus 20 Celsius, but in the winter we have days where it rains. We always do. January, February, March, we have days where it rains. It's rare we'll have one of those months where there isn't a rain, right? Well, I can really see the fish getting more active with the, uh, the increased sunlight. Another good reason to have fish in a pond is that the another thing they eat, <laughs> if you don't have fish uh, early in the season this time of year, the pond will develop an algae. Um, it will not develop algae with goldfish, at least in my experience, because they, they eat the algae. <laughs> Boy, they're really active over there. They're moving around. Uh, anyway, just a few points on goldfish ponds and breaking rules. And <laughs> This is the cheapest goldfish pond ever. The only cost was uh, digging it with a, my back, right? I dug this with a shovel. <laughs> and uh, I spent about uh, five bucks on, on goldfish that were, you know, destined to be eaten by piranhas. So, uh, you know, all in all, I'd say pretty good, uh, pretty good value for money. <laughs> and it's so pleasant just to watch them uh, do their thing. Now, sadly, when you have it natural like this, the water, at least in my experience, I can never get the water... Uh, that clear. This is about as clear as it gets. Um, and I'm sure if I had more, I do have aquatic plants, but not a lot of them. Like, you know, every year I try to add natural ones here and some of them make it and some of them don't. There's kind of like a little bit of grass around the edge there that grows in ditches nearby. I plant mosses along the bank, but they tend to the bank sort of falls in and gets washed out. Uh, so those work to some extent, but uh, anyway, the more plant life you can get going in there, uh, the better, because the plants take all the, the nitrogen and stuff out of the, out of the water. But uh, anyway, just a few, a little bit of rambling, <laughs> a few thoughts about goldfish ponds 
and uh, breaking rules and having fun. So uh, hope you found that interesting. If you please like, share, subscribe. And until next time, get out there, get at it. Have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching.